say uh, your principal is very correct in saying that you guys are consistently, for the past nine years, our number one audience. My students say it every single year. So that's kudos to all of you for being so respectful and supportive, and we really appreciate all of it. I wanted to tell just a couple quick things about the students that are behind you. Uh, as many of you have known, how many of you have seen one of our shows, at least one of them? Raise your hands. Okay, so you'll see that you have a lot of you have seen multiple years. Uh, this is part of a class that you can take at the Illinois Central College. It's a three credit class that's transferable to four year colleges. The students actually have spent the better part of 11 weeks actually rehearsing this production. And then the 12th week, we board a Peoria Charter Coach bus. We go all throughout Central Illinois. Uh, this is a huge day for us because you guys are the biggest bus tour stop that we have uh, until we get to uh, Northwoods Community Church tonight where we're doing the uh, ICC Presents Jim Maloof's Legacy of Love for the Arts in Central Illinois, uh, which features actually six other performing arts organizations, including us, all performing to celebrate the legacy of former Mayor Maloof and his connections to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and raising money for that particular organization. So we're really excited about moving to that new venue and uh, kicking off our third year of that participation. Um, so these students are a variety of different majors. You're going to find that they will uh, share their majors at the end as we've done in the past. And we got a really good diversity of majors represented in this particular group. Uh, we also have a show that represents all different kinds of things, things that we've never done before this year. Uh, we have a lot of dance in it, we've got a lot more music, and we also have uh, some uh, unique attributes, specifically when you look at it from uh, the perspective of music, we have a rap song for the first time, uh, which our audiences have really been enjoying, so look forward to that. Uh, so it's a good combination of all those different types of, of activities. So this year's theme is Random Acts of Kindness. And uh, the reason I picked that theme is that I'm from Washington, Illinois, and as all of you know, uh, we were hit by a very big uh, tornado uh, about a year and a half ago, and I saw uh, so much devastation, but within that devastation, I saw a lot of random acts of kindness that lifted people up and rose, uh, you know, lifted them above a very tragic circumstance. And it made me think that, you know, in tragedy, sometimes we see the greatest beauty in the, in the uh, universe. We see the greatest beauty of humankind. And so that's one of the things that I encourage you to think about as we take you through this show is how you can get back to your school, how you can get back to your community, uh, how we can take care of one another a little bit more often. And so that's really what the central theme is. So without further ado, it is my privilege and honor to introduce the 2015 ICC Reader's Theater. This year's show is We Will, We Will Rack You, Rockin' This World with Random Acts of Kindness. Find as 
Match made. Done. Happening. Or chosen without method or conscious decision. Or. Odd. Unusual. Or, 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 or. <laughs> Unexpected. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> found that giving back can actually lead to some pretty impressive health and emotional benefits. The study involved more than 3,000 volunteers gauging their reactions both physically and mentally after doing good deeds. The results? Let's see. Helping others contributes to the maintenance of good health and it diminishes the effects of diseases and disorders, serious and minor, physical and psychological. A study also showed that those who volunteer their time often experience a helper's high. <laughs> I know just what you're talking about. Oh, not that kind of high. Fools. The best kind. <laughs> <laughs> Due to the release of endorphins. Um, what about dolphins? <laughs> so in other words, a good deed a day keeps the doctor away. In the next 30 minutes or so, we'll take a look at some inspiring stories about kindness, compassion, common courtesy, and reaping the rewards from random acts of kindness. And what better way to begin than with James Taylor's You Got a Friend. When you're down in trouble and you need a helping hand. And nothing, nothing is going right. Just close your eyes and think of me. And soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. You just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you got to do is call, and I'll be there, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a friend. And that old north wind should begin to blow. 
Keep your head together and call my name out loud. Yeah, Sue, I'll be knocking on your door. You just called out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you got to do is call, and I'll be there, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a friend. Ain't it good to know that you have a friend? When people can be so cold. They'll hurt you. And desert you. And take your soul if you let them. Oh, yeah. But don't you let them. You just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you got to do is call. short poem. A simple act of kindness. About the powerful force. And lasting impact of random acts of kindness. A, a simple, simple act of kindness can stop a million tears. A little hug. Can give so much joy. A letter now and then to someone can save so many wasted years. And we should hold every moment precious. And help as many as we can with a simple act of kindness every now and then. Imagine the world would be a better place if we all cared a little more. Imagine how many smiling faces would greet us at the door. If we extended that helping hand. With a simple act of kindness. That could spread. Across many lands. <laughs> that, that was powerful. Harris's poem was written way back in 1945. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm just over cleanse. Give me a hug, come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it in. the dream of becoming a doctor. Ouch! And a bad one at that. <laughs> Ten years after becoming a practicing doctor, another physician approached him and asked for his help with a very sick patient she had been assigned. When the young doctor asked what the case was about, he assured his physician friend that he would try his best to help. The young doctor then went to review the patient's records, treatment, and medications. But the name on the records it sounded very familiar. In fact, it was the same girl who many years ago had
had given him a glass of milk and a sandwich while he tried to sell baked goods for textbooks in the neighboring villages. After the many tests and surgeries, the girl was ready to be discharged from the hospital. But right when she was about to be released, she received the bill. It was a very steep one at that. But there was a note attached. It was a note from the young doctor. It simply read, your bill has been paid in full with a glass of milk and a sandwich. Because one good deed deserves another. I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors, and that's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. True colors are beautiful. Until I read the last one. What is the first name of the woman who cleans the school? Surely this was some kind of joke. I had seen the cleaning woman several times. She was tall, dark haired, and in her 50s. But how would I know her name? So I turned in my quiz leaving the last question blank. At the end of class, a boy raised his hand and asked if the last question would count towards our grade? Yeah. Absolutely. In your careers, you will meet many people. All are significant. They deserve your attention and your care. Even if all you do is smile and say hello. I never forgot that lesson. I also learned her name was Dorothy. When my best friend gives me something, I say thank you. When my other friend gives me something, I say thank you. I can see it makes them happy when I say it so politely. Yes, it manners me to always say thank you. Mark was walking home from school one day when he noticed the boy ahead of him had tripped and dropped all of the books he was carrying along with two sweaters, a baseball bat, a glove, and a small tape recorder. <laughs> Mark knelt down and helped the boy pick up the scattered articles. Since they were going the same way, he helped to carry part of the burden. Mark learned the boy's name is Bill, and that he loved video games, history, and movies. And that he was struggling in all of his other subjects. And that he had just broken up with his girlfriend. <laughs> they arrived at Bill's home first, and Mark was invited in to watch some television and to share a coke. The evening passed pleasantly with a few laughs and some shared small talk. Then Mark went home. They continued to see each other at school, had lunch together once or twice, then both graduated from junior high school, then up at the same high school where they had brief contacts over the years. Finally, the long-awaited senior year came, and just three weeks before our graduation, Bill asked Mark if they could talk. Bill reminded him of the day many years ago when they had first met. Did you ever wonder why I was carrying so many things home that day? Asked Bill. You see, I just cleaned out my locker because I didn't want to leave a mess for anyone else. I just stored away some of my mother's sleeping pills, and I was going home to commit suicide. But after we spent that time talking and laughing, I realized that if I killed myself, I would have missed that time. So many others like it. So you see, Mark, when you picked up those books that day, you did a lot more. You saved my life. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. And I do appreciate you being round. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please, please help me? The famous poet and writer Edgar Albert Guest speaks of how acts of kindness can often blossom into something simply wonderful. In his poem, 
One never knows how far a word of kindness grows. One never sees how far a smile of friendship flees. Down through the years, the deed forgotten reappears. One kindly word the souls of many here have stirred. Man goes his way and tells with every passing day until life's end. Once unto me he played the friend. We cannot say what lips are praising us today. We cannot tell whose prayers are asking God to guard us well. But kindness lives beyond the memory of him who gives. Help! I need somebody! Help! Not just anybody! Help! I need someone! Help! When I was younger, so much younger than today, I never needed anybody's help in any way. But now those days are gone. And I'm not so self-assured. Now I find I've changed my mind. And opened up the doors. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. And I do appreciate you being round. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please, please help me? Famous poet Rudyard Kipling describes in his poem, If, why it is important even in the most trying times, to do the right thing. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting. Or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken. Twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools and watch the things you gave your life for broken and you stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings, and risk it all on one turn of pitch and toss and lose, and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to carry on long after they are gone, except for the will which says to them, Hold on! If you can talk with crowds, and your virtue. Or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you. If all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute. With 60 seconds worth of distance run. Yours is the earth and everything. That in it. And which is more, you will be a man, my son. There comes a time when we heed a certain call. When the world must come together as one There are people dying And it's time to lend a hand to life The greatest gift of love In 1985, Pop King Michael Jackson and fellow artist Lionel Richie created the words of a song to address a very important need, hunger. A widespread famine had swept through Africa, leaving hundreds and thousands in pure desperation. <laughs> the song was a collaboration between some of the most famous artists in the music industry at the time. And it quickly skyrocketed to multi-platinum and quadruple platinum certification by the Recording Industry of America. We can't go on pretending day by day. That someone, somewhere, will make a change. We're all part of God's great big family. And the truth, you know? Love is all you need. We are the world. Over 20 million copies of the hit single were sold. Raising over $63 million. For humanitarian aid in Africa and the U.S. Just 
one song written by two people, 63 million. All going to help those less fortunate to have a better life. And the freedom to dream. For a better tomorrow. There are thousands of stories about people famous and common who have made a huge difference in the lives of a fellow humankind. One great example is the former mayor of the largest central Illinois community, Peoria, Illinois, Jim Maloof. Known as the singing mayor, Jim Maloof not only used his voice to entertain people, but to change the lives of others. In an interview with the Peoria Journal Star years before his death, an 83-year-old Mayor Maloof spoke about his endless pursuit to fight childhood cancer. He shared a story about an early day of for the St. Jude's Children's Hospital, well before the Peoria affiliate was built. It was 1959 when Jim Maloof had arranged for Danny Thomas, the founder of St. Jude's, to come and visit Peoria and get a first-hand look at his fine city and share Danny's vision for St. Jude's. We arrive at the local hospital. It was so hot that day, well into the 90s. There's a new lunch whistle, and we arrived at some ball diamond or recreational field. The patients were gathered in a large semicircle with their families. I was introducing Danny Thomas to Dr. Klein, and I literally had to yell at the top of my lungs just to be heard. But people did not, above all this noise, above all the horns honking, above the noon whistle, above everything else that was happening, there came a voice. And that voice said, Daddy, Daddy Thomas, if you're here, if you're really here, I've got to see you. It was such a pathetic cry. 75 feet away, a nurse pointed down to a youngster in a wheelchair. Danny said, Take me to that kid. Immediately, Danny saw that the youngster was blind. He was <laughs> trembling so hard. He had some sort of palsy. In his hand was a white envelope clenched in his fist, but he couldn't keep it still. Danny knelt down in front of the youngster and touched him. As a number of blind people will do, the youngster reached over, touched his face, and said, Are you really Daddy Thomas? Yes. Yes. The youngster said that when he found out Danny was coming, that he saved candy and gum money. He had something for Danny. He said, I want to give you this. For those kids you're trying to help save. Danny wept so hard. Harder than any adult I've ever seen in my life. When he was finally able to pull himself together, he asked what was in the envelope. He said, 75 cents. And it's all yours, Danny. <laughs> the kid, 11 years old, blind, suffering from palsy. His name was Billy. Johnson. Danny picked the youngster up and took him to a little recreational area. He told me to get up and sing a song while he pulled himself together. <laughs> Danny vowed then and there that Billy Johnson's 75 cents would go on the cornerstone of the St. Jude statue, which would someday go in front of the St. Jude Hospital in Memphis. Danny took that 75 cents and he told the story in such a way that he raised millions of dollars. By 1969, Jim Maloof had secured the vision and acceptance of the Lord in Memphis to build a St. Jude's affiliate in his hometown, Peoria, Illinois. That acceptance led to Peoria's first St. Jude WEEK TV telethon with the goal of $75,000. The goals were met, and the first St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital affiliate first opened its doors in 1972, the first of six nationwide affiliates established. And through it all, Jim Maloof continued to sing a simple song. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment with peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. If everyone cared and nobody cried, if everyone loved and nobody died, 
If everyone shared and swallowed their pride, then we'd see the day when nobody died. And I'm singing, amen, I, amen, I, I'm alive. And I'm singing, amen, I, amen, I, I'm alive. Before you know what kindness really is, you will lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment, like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all of this must go. So you know how desolate the landscapes can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking that bus will never stop. The passengers eating chicken and maize will stare at the windows forever. Before you truly understand the tender gravity of kindness, you must first travel to where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you. How he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the clock. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. It is only kindness that ties our shoes. It is only kindness that sends us out into the day to mail letters and purchase bread. Only kindness raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for, and then goes with you. Everywhere. Everywhere. Like a shadow or a friend. While there are many who have served as Ray the Max of Kindness role models, Mother Teresa's mission can easily be summed up with a poem she wrote in her later years entitled, Anyway. People are often illogical, unreasonable, and self-centered. Forgive, Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed, Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, People may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. What you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you've got and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. 525,600 minutes. 525,000 moments so dear. 525,600 minutes. How do you measure a year? In daylights. In sunsets. In midnights. In cups of coffee. In inches. In miles. In laughter. In strut. In 525,600 minutes. How do you measure a year in the life? How about love? How about love? How about love? Measure in love.
We all have sorrows. But if we are wise, we know there is always tomorrow. Lean on me. Somebody to lean on. I might just have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm gonna. When somebody's talking to you, listen intently. Be patient. Volunteer your time. Donate what you can. As you're passing by, smile more. If you see someone struggling, lend a hand. Tell her she's beautiful. Think of your fellow man. Give him a helping hand. Put a little love in your heart. You see it's getting late. Oh, please don't hesitate. Put, Put a little love.
an outstanding audience, I want to take just a moment and have each of my cast members introduce themselves. Uh, for those of you who were here last year, you probably might remember Jessica. She was in our cast last year. She serves as our intern and also a cast member this year again. And uh, so they're going to tell you their name, uh, their major at Illinois Central College, and also their hometown. Hi guys, I'm Jessica. Sorry, my voice is gone. I'm experiencing a little cold. Um, I'm from Peoria, Illinois, and I am majoring in communication disorders. Hello. <laughs> I'm from Peoria, Illinois, and my major is Business Management and Marketing. Hi guys, I'm Nicole Robinson. I'm from Peoria, Illinois, and, yeah, yeah. and my major is Biology. Hi, I'm Zach Kroll, and I hail from Glassford. Does anyone know where that's at? No. I know. Oh, all right. I'm hanging with you. He knows where it's at. What's up, buddy? Uh, I know him, so, um, hi. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I am a communications major. Hi, I'm Libby Brock. I'm also from Peoria, Illinois, and I'm also a communications major. I'm Lexi Boyer. I'm a general education major, and I'm from Peoria, too. Hey, um, before I say anything about myself, you guys are awesome. I just want to say you. You. Uh, all of you are. Anyway, my name is James Howe. I come from Peoria, Illinois, and I'm studying for the health sciences major. Hi, everybody. I'm Kara Summers. I'm from Farmington, Illinois. Go Farmers. Um, and my major is business administration with a focus in finance. Alright everyone, I have one request. Many of you do not know, actually all of you don't know. But today is Zach's 19th birthday. <laughs> together and work with one another and overlook things and overcome and all the words you hear is it's very important we take this and move it into practice and uh, it's the only way we'll survive as a, as a country. It's the only way. So, um, hey, big, uh, big applause one more time. Thank you.